Hello friends, welcome to Good Hacker Lead Code Tutorial. Here we are going to solve climbing stairs coding problem. So you are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Note here, given n will be a positive integer. So here is an example. Input is 2. That means there are two stairs. And output, that's 2. That means in total, there are two distinct ways we can climb to the top. So explanation here. So there are two ways to climb to the top. First is just to make a one step by another step. One step, one step, and to the top. And second is make a two step directly to reach to the top. And next example. So input is a 3. So that means there are three stairs. And output is also three. So there are three distinct ways you can climb to the top. Explanation. So there are three ways to climb to the top. First, just a one step, one step, one step. And next is one step first. And then second, two steps next. And third, that means we can make a two step first. And then make a one step to reach to the top. So here, let's think about how to solve this climbing stairs coding problems. So here, I have some example scenarios to help you to observe some patterns to climb stairs. So first scenario, here, there's um, no stairs. Here is just a flat floor. So here, there's no stairs. So we can only to climb, make a two step or one step. But uh, here we still have to uh, make a choice. That's the uh, only choice we can do is just to stay, stay as it is. So that's the only one way we can do. So there are one these things ways. And next, there are one stair and how many ways we can climb to the top. So we can directly from the floor to make one step to reach to the top. So in total, there are one distinct way to reach to the top. And next, there are two stairs. So what we can do is we can first one, make one step and then make another step to reach to the top. Or we can directly from the floor to make a two step to reach to the top. So in total, there are two ways. And next, so there are three stairs. So first, we can make a one step, one step, one step to reach the top. Or we can make a one step and then make a two step to reach the top. Or we can make a two step first and one step next to reach the top. So the total is a three distinct ways to reach to the top. And next one, so there are four stairs. We can do is uh, we can make a one step, one step, one step, one step to reach to the top. Or we can do is uh, make a one step, then one step, and then make a two step to reach to the top. Or we can do is we can make a one step first, then make a two step, and then make another one step. To reach to the top. All we can do is we can make a two step first, then make a one step to reach to the top. Another way we can do is we can make a um, two step first, then make another two step to reach to the top. So in total here, there are five ways to reach to the fourth stairs. So if we look at these scenarios, Actually, we can see some, we can observe some patterns. So if you look at especially like this uh, third or fourth scenario, so like a third scenario, since we are only allowed to make one step and the two steps one time, so what we can do is we can, uh, if we want to reach to the third step, we can only be able to jump from the first stair or from the second stairs. So actually, 
how many distinct ways we can reach to the third stair is related to how many distinct ways we can reach to the first stair and the second stair. So it's actually sum up how many distinct ways we can reach to the first and how many distinct ways we can reach to the second. So these two, these three, the, the three distinct ways to reach to the third stair, they actually sum up the how many distinct ways we reach to the first one and the second one. Also, like uh, here, like this uh, fourth one, if we want to reach to the fourth stairs, we can only be able to jump from the second stair or jump from the third stair. So th the total distinct weights we can reach to the fourth one is just sum up the total distinct way we can reach from the second stair. We can reach to the second stair. So that's a uh, two plus the how many distinct ways we can reach to the third one. That's three. So since we find this pattern, so we can convert to a code. So if we try to write in a code understandable way, so it would be like this. We can introduce a array of integers variables called um, ways. So ways just uh, record how many distinct ways we can reach to the ice stairs. So like the first one, like zero. Zero means there's uh, no stairs on the floor. So its value is one. And if that uh, index is one, so that means there's a uh, only one stair. So the total ways to reach to E is also just one. And the int two, so that would be, so in total would be two. In total is a two because of the is actually related to the how many distinct ways of previous there and the previous previous stairs. Like the zero stair, there's only one way, and the one stair, there's only one way, so in total it's two. So like the next one, so integer three is um, three. Int four, the four stairs would be five. And this pattern, if that's a uh, n stairs, so actually it's just sum up the previous previous stair, how many distinct ways to reach, and uh, how many distinct ways to reach to the previous stair. So that's just this formula. So let's come back to the problem. Let's coding in Java to solve this coding problem. As we just say that, so if the n, so this n, this is a n positive number, but if that's a n, um, like a, a just a smaller than one, so it's like a, there's only no no stair or just one stair, we can directly return just a, only one way to reach to the top, like we see here. And then we can introduce uh, this uh, variable, array of uh, integers, so called ways, so distinct ways to reach to the ice stairs. Nance would be n plus one, since we include the z zero. So the first one, the zero stair would be just one, uh, and the only one stair that also just one way to reach to it. And then thereafter, that would be having, so we, we should use this formula, this formula. So starting from the two, 
and uh, the more than the n i plus pi. So this for loop inside this for loop. So we can include this uh, integer. So we are doing the calculation for each there, uh, like um, for each index there, like how many distinct way can be reached. That's n. Uh, that's i. Actually, the here is i. So i minus two plus. Um, no, that's a ways. So ways. Ways. Here is a ways. There's a variable ways. Ways. I minus one. And in the end, if we try to retrieve how many distinct ways to reach to the nth stairs, it's just a, we can use return the ways dot n. So that's it. So if uh, n, this input is uh, smaller than the, just smaller or equal to one, just return one. The only one way to reach to it. Otherwise, if the n is greater than 1, so we can initialize this uh, array of integers called ways. So this ways, so the if no stair or just one stair, there's only one way to reach to them. Otherwise, use this formula. So the the i's uh, stair, we can use um, how many distinct ways to reach to the previous previous stair plus the previous stairs. And if we want to know how many ways to reach to the nth stair, just return ways n, index n. So let's click Submit. OK. Accept it. So we successfully solved this coding problem. So as you can see, so this uh, n stairs, um, this climbing stairs actually is a dynamic programming coding, coding problem. So actually we build an array of integers to store the, the like uh, each stairs of value distinct ways and is relate to the previous the, State the uh, value, and uh, use this uh, steer variable. We can know like uh, it's uh, actually calculate from the previous previous steer and previous steer. So this is a um, uh, simple example uh, about dynamic dynamic programming coding problem. I hope you like uh, get some thoughts after watching this video. Okay. Thank you for watching and uh, thank you for subscription to Good Tech YouTube channel. So see you next time. Bye.